This is the Aromatic Wisdom Podcast, Episode 18. In today's show, we're going to have a look at the six most common stressors of the holiday season, and then we'll also look at essential oil remedies and affirmations that will help you cope with each one. You're listening to the Aromatic Wisdom Podcast with your host, Liz Fulcher. If you're interested in learning about essential oils, hearing interviews with industry experts, and discovering ways to grow your own aromatherapy business, this is the podcast for you. For more information and show notes, visit the website at aromaticwisdominstitute.com. Now, sit back, relax, take a deep breath, and enjoy as Liz shares a dose of aromatic wisdom. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me again here at the Aromatic Wisdom Podcast. My name is Liz Fulcher. I have been working with essential oils since 1991 when they first came into my field of vision through an aromatherapy massage that was given to my son when he was born in Rome, Italy in, in May of 1991. And that was what opened the door to the world of essential oils for me. It's a, quite an unusual um, introduction to aromatherapy. And in fact, I wrote a blog post with that title. And if you'd like to read that, I'll put a link in the show notes so you can check it out. So before we get into today's content, I'd like to share something that I'm very excited about. It's a book I just had uh, released on Amazon. It's called My Book of Blends, and it is a journal-style book. It's called My Book of Blends because it's designed to be where you keep your favorite essential oil and hydrosol recipes. So I've got a copy of the book in my hand, and there's a little dedication page, and then it... I created this book with my dear friend, Natalie Collins, who is, she's a business coach. She also is a, um, uses essential oils. I wrote the content and she did the design. So it was a great collaborative effort. So there's about the authors. And then there is just a little bit in the intro, not in the intro, but in the first pages uh, on carriers that you can use when blending, safe blending guidelines, how to use this book, and there is a My Blends Index. There's a love factor where you put your personal rating of your blend. Blend names because you want to give them a clever name. How to use them. And then we talk about the different ways to use essential oils. You know, what kind of a blend you're making. The purpose of your blend. The ingredients in your blend. Notes and preparation. And then I have a little safety note there. And after that, <clears throat> that's kind of the basics about blending. So even if someone was really, really new to using essential oils and blending, this they could use this book. The rest of the book has sections where you fill in your recipe. So it's a, it's all laid out for you that all you have to do is write in your recipe, the name, the ingredients, how much you love it, how to use it, the purpose, and so forth. I'll put a picture of the inside in the show notes so you can see what it looks like. It's fun. It's really designed to be, in fact, I don't even have my name or Natalie's name on the cover because my book of blends means it's your book. You write the blends that go inside the book. There's just an acknowledgement of Natalie and myself in the inside, but we don't have our name out there because it's meant to be for you. Of course, I can't, I have, it's December, I have to say, is a great Christmas gift. If someone is either wanting to get into using essential oils or already it makes a lot of blends, this book would be so great as a, as a holiday gift, especially if you add some essential oils. So I'm excited about the book. I hope you love it. It is designed to be a tool to help you in your use of essential oils and in your aromatherapy practice. Anyway, and of course, I'll put a link to the, to the book on Amazon in the show notes. All right, let's get into today's content, which is managing holiday stress with two things, essential oils and affirmations. I love essential oils, obviously, and I love affirmations. You know, affirmations are, are a positive statement set in the present. An affirmation is, I am feeling peaceful, not I will be feeling peaceful, or I would like to feel peaceful, or I am feeling I'm becoming more peaceful. It is right now, even if you don't believe it. And very often when you, when you say an affirmation for the first time, you feel like a liar. I trust the process of life. Well, how many of us really trust it? How many of us really trust ourselves? You know, it can really feel like a lie in the beginning or today I, f I feel peaceful and calm when inside your guts might be all turned up with anxiety if you just keep saying, today I am peaceful and calm, today I feel 
light and happy. Whatever is um, what you're not feeling that you'd really like to feel, state it in the present. So that is what an affirmation is. There are tons of affirmations all over the internet, but I really recommend that you create your own because certain words will resonate with you. The other thing about affirmations is don't include the negative. <clears throat> so here's an example. My husband and I created an affirmation. Our accounts are all paid in full, which means we don't have any debt. But I didn't want to use the D word in the affirmation. I didn't want to say we are debt free because I don't want to keep putting emphasis on the debt word, the debt, 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 debt. I didn't want to keep saying that. So instead, what James and I say is our accounts are all paid in full. There is enough to pay the accounts. There is plenty. Our accounts are paid in full. So we stated in the positive right now and state it how we'd really like it to be. If someone has an illness, you don't say, I am cancer free because you don't want to keep saying the word cancer. You don't want to give cancer power. So you would say, I am healthy and my, you know, I've, my body is in perfect health. You might have to rework the affirmations a couple times, but you'll know when it's the right one for you because all of a sudden it'll resonate with you. You'll feel light inside. You'll feel pulled toward it. Um, I always like to use a push-pull reference when I'm uh, dealing with something. If I feel pulled toward it, it resonates with me. It's right for me. If I feel a bit of a push, like pushing away from it, then I know, eh, that's, that's not, it's not speaking to me. It's not for me. So notice your push pull when you're working with affirmations. If you really feel pulled towards something or it lightens you up, that's your affirmation. All right. I jumped the gun, went right into the affirmations because I was so stinking excited, but I'm going to go back now to just to start the content from the beginning and just talk about the stress of the holidays. In the interest of full disclosure, I wrote a blog post on this topic last November. So in November, 2014, I did a blog post called Managing Stress with Essential Oils and Affirmations. I think it was a really good blog post. I got a lot of positive feedback on it. And I just feel like I thought, you know, rather than, than try to reinvent the wheel, I'm going to talk about the content from that blog post in a, and I'm going to add some new things. And also a lot of people prefer to hear information rather than read it. So for those of you that love to hear, I mean, I can put the link to that blog post in the show notes. And uh, so now you have two sources for this information. Right. So last fall, I put a message out on Facebook and I asked people, what stresses you out over the holidays? I didn't ask them. I actually, I said in a word or two, because I didn't want people to tell me big, long stories. And I just said, give me one word, two words. What aspect of the holiday season is the most stressful for you? And I got 50 responses. In fact, I got them quickly. People were like, yeah, I'll tell you what upsets me. Boom. My family, my in-laws, cooking, travel, buying gifts, people who forget the meaning of the holidays. That wasn't two words, but it was, it, they made their point. Overspending, you know, money is always a big issue at the holidays. Overspending or not having enough. Both of them are, create a tremendous amount of stress. Eating the wrong foods, cleaning the house, shopping and everything that goes with it. The money that you spend on shopping, having to buy for people you don't really want to buy anything for, having to buy something that you don't really know the person very well. For example, um, if you have like a secret Santa at work, the whole driving to the mall, to the store experience of trying to find a parking place, trying to uh, deal with the crowds inside the store. Even if you don't go anywhere, one of the things that I personally worry about is, oh my gosh, will I order it in time? I got to order that thing today. Oh my gosh, Amazon's my best choice. It's fast. I start worrying about, will I order it online in time? All right, I've got a couple more here. The need for everything to be perfect. Yuck. Worrying that there isn't enough under the tree. Feeling the need to do everything all by myself. I don't have enough help. I have to do all the decorations. I have to do all the cooking. Here's a good one. How about lack of sleep? or probably more common for most people is lack of rest. There's a lot that happens at the holiday time. There are a lot of obligations and commitments. You've got, some people just have a lot of parties. I had a, a client come up to me the other day and say, I am so exhausted. If I go to one more Christmas party, I'm going to vomit. 
between her work, her husband's work, uh, her kids' activities. She just had Christmas party after Christmas party and was exhausted, had no free time. You might have to shuffle your kids around to choral practice. And, you know, there just tend to be a lot of events. A friend of mine has three kids. Um, One's in ballet and the other two are in sports and she is super busy this time of year. So lack of rest, lack of just stopping and chilling and allowing yourself to refill the well a little bit can be a big problem this time of year. So maybe just take a second, get out a pencil and paper and put this podcast on pause, unless you're driving, of course, and write down your own stressors. What are the things that really get under your skin and you know, make you clench your jaw this time of year? What gives you anxiety to even think about facing that thing? You know, awareness is half the bottle, half the bottle. Yeah, <laughs> that's another solution. We're talking a central oil bottle, of course, not any other kind of bottle. So half the battle is understanding what your personal stressors are. If your stressors are your family, write that down. And then once you're aware of it, and some people, families, one people pretty much know they get up their nose. It's like, ugh, um, you know, I don't want to see those people that I only see one time a year. But if there are, there, you may find yourself aware of, wow, I didn't realize how much shopping really is something that, that's worrisome for me. And then find a solution. Once you understand what's really creating havoc inside your brain, you can start to uh, change it. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and give you six very common causes of stressor at the holiday season, but pretty much all year as well. And then I'm going to give you an affirmation for dealing with it that you can say when you notice this thing is coming up for you. And then I'm going to recommend some essential oils and a makeup and a blend for you to make to go with the affirmation. Let's get started. Number one, perfectionism. Dun, dun, dun. That's mine. That's why I have it first. Make this your mantra. Does it really matter? That's not the affirmation, but ask yourself when you start feeling perfectionism coming in of the cake doesn't look right. I have to do 27 batches of cookies. I can only, I only have time to do a a dozen. Um, My mother-in-law wants me to look a certain way. I have to wear certain clothes. I have to be on time. Does it really matter in the scheme of things? Think for a minute about your own best holiday memories. Was it the exquisite tree? Was it the gifts that you received? Was it the perfect table? Probably not. Generally, good memories are are generated by experiences that you have with people, with human connections, with conversations. I read someplace years ago in a Reader's Digest um, book, a story that I've never forgotten where a family had five children and they had one bathroom and they always kept talking about, we got to buy a, um, we have to, you know, put in a second bathroom, got to put in a second bathroom. But this family also every year went on a ski trip. They took all five kids on a ski trip, one bathroom, five kids, ski trips. They never got the second bathroom. And years later, when the kids were older and like in their twenties, um, the mom who was writing the story said, one of the kids called and said, you know, mom, those years that we went skiing and had those ski trips, they are some of my best memories. That was awesome. Thank you for doing that for us. And she said, no one probably would have ever called and said, thank you for that second bathroom, mom. We have good memories of that. That's not the stuff that counts. Human connections, human experiences. So perfectionism. Here's your affirmation. Release from perfection affirmation. It doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. And the blend I recommend, I call it, it's all good. Lavender, five drops. Neroli, two drops. Lemon, five drops. And I recommend putting this in an inhaler, one of those uh, plastic tube inhalers. And I can put a link in the show notes of where you can purchase some. Uh, You just add your essential oils to the cotton wick, pop it into the inhaler and carry it with you. And every time you begin to feel panic that something is not the way you think it should be, or you feel um, like, oh my gosh, it's, it's open the inhaler. Take a deep breath, inhale your uh, blend and repeat your affirmation. It doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. Trust me, kids will remember a stressed mom much more than they'll remember anything else that they'll remember there. They'll even remember a stressed mom over not enough gifts and stressed dads too. I'm a woman, so I'm speaking from my own perspective, but trust me, dads, stressed dads are no fun either. Stressor number two, 
overwhelm. Overwhelm can look a lot of different ways. It can look like exhaustion. It can look like anger. It can definitely look like resentment when you're just taken on way too much by yourself and you're trying to do it all. Heavens to Betsy, ask for help. Um, you're going to feel engulfed in responsibilities. Delegate, get your kids on board. Please don't try to do a Martha Stewart look for your house. Only Martha Stewart can do that. And then Martha doesn't even do it. She's got people, she points and shouts and tells them where to put the stuff. If you have a big job to do, a lot of lights to put up or a lot of cookies to make, get together with some friends and make it a party. Say, you know, I will help you with your house if you help me with mine. Let's make cookies together and, you know, have a glass of wine and listen to holiday music and chat and we'll all get our Christmas cookies done made in one afternoon. Make it fun. Sometimes less really is more. So here's your overwhelm affirmation. I can ask for help and be powerful at the same time. No more overwhelm blend. Vetiver two drops. Marjoram two drops. Sweet orange four drops. I recommend you use this in a bath. Go put everyone to work and go into the bathroom, light some candles, put on some soft music, run a warm, relaxing bath and add the essential oils. And remember, you deserve it. Stressor number three, crowds, parking, shopping, anxiety. Um, if you get out into the holiday chaos and you suddenly find yourself saturated with confusion, with noise, the overstimulation of the crowds, that's one that gets me personally. I'm very easily overstimulated by a lot of noise um, or any or things that are too loud, even music too loud in a restaurant. I, to the, much to the embarrassment of my sons, I always ask them to turn the music down in the restaurant. Or if I'm sitting in a section where there's a speaker, I ask them to turn the speaker down. It's just too much for me with conversation and the music. Anyway, um, so if you get out into the holiday chaos, you find yourself overstimulated or just going nuts, try this simple solution. Your anxiety affirmation is this. Every breath I inhale calms me and every breath I exhale takes away tension. Okay, I said tension. I said not to say those things. Um, maybe every breath I inhale calms me. Lavender for peace. Carry a small bottle of lavender essential oil with you. When you feel ready to melt down, find a quiet spot, take out the lavender, take a deep whiff from the bottle and repeat your affirmation. Even if you are at a holiday party and there's too much going on, too many people are talking at you, or if you just don't do well in that kind of a social situation, go into the ladies room or the men's room, go into the bathroom, go into the stall, pull out your lavender, take a deep whiff and just drop your shoulders and take a couple minutes to collect yourself. Stressor number four. I call scarcity mindset. This is an important one because it's all about if there's enough. Very often anxiety comes from scarcity and scarcity is a mind, you know, it's in your head. Sometimes there's plenty, but you fear that there isn't enough. Whenever you're experiencing the butterflies of anxiety or worry, stop and ask yourself, hmm, what do I feel there's not enough of? Not enough money, not enough time, not enough love, not enough whatever. Scarcity is... Um, often a very big cause of anxiety. Now, specifically with in terms of money, if money is tight, make your gifts. My goodness. As aromatherapists, we have tons of skills. You can make a simple bath salt. You can make anything, you know, a complicated body butter. But most people, especially if they're not very familiar with aromatherapy, they're really happy with, with a pillow spray made with lavender and water. And you can just hand make a nice little label for it and get some raffia and tie it up. And I think people really appreciate that you've taken the time. Um, it's got, I think it means a lot more than anything you would find in a store. The prosperity affirmation with this stressor is there's always enough. I have everything I need because it's true. The abundance blend that I'm recommending, basil chemotype linalool, three drops, peppermint, two drops. You're going to add these essential oils to a diffuser while repeating your affirmation. And you say it every time a thought that there isn't enough creeps in. There's always enough. I have everything I need because it's true. Stressor number five is sadness. It can also be loneliness. It can be regret. It can be sad memories. The holidays can just be a dark time for a lot of people when they miss loved ones who are no, no longer there or they just remember better times. Here's your happiness affirmation. 
I am grateful to God for this wonderful life and thankful to everyone who has touched my life. If the word God doesn't resonate with you, put in there whatever does. Spirit, universe, grandfather. My husband says grandfather. He <clears throat> refers to God as, as grandfather. It's a Native American thing. The cheerful diffuser blend. Orange, three drops. Lemon, three drops. Bergamo, three drops. Black spruce, two drops. So um, you want to add those to an inhaler. Again, I love those darn inhalers. They're fabulous. Uh, take it with you every, wherever you go and try to walk every day. Try to get some light in your face. Uh, try to get some sunshine. Um, I recently just ordered on Amazon one of those therapy lamps that generate something like 10,000 lumens of light that I'm going to be using in the morning because I am very sensitive to the dark of winter. So if you want to get one of those, but definitely keep cheerful, um, bl um, cheerful essential oils in your diffuser and always remember gratitude, 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 even if things were better than or seemed better than, or even if you're missing your, your parents, stop and think, you know, of great, grateful thoughts because you can't be depressed and grateful at the same time. Okay, stressor number six, lack of good sleep. So too many parties, too many late nights, worry, just again, generally being overstimulated, too much junk food, lots of sugar at Christmas time can really throw us off out of whack. Um, so essential oils, of course, they, they're famous for helping people sleep. So by all means, use anything that really works for you for sleep and rest. And um, the affirmation is, I've done my best for today. I have earned my sleep for tonight. I'm ready to rest. And a sleepy time blend that I like is lavender, Roman chamomile, vetiver, and lang lang. And you're going to add these essential oils again to your inhaler. You can also put them in a diffuser next to your bed if that helps. I didn't give you a specific number of drops. I would probably go easy with the lang lang, maybe two drops total. <clears throat> but lavender, Roman chamomile, vetiver, and lang lang are all good for rest and sleep. Uh, if you're putting them in a diffuser, just go ahead with one drop of each. I will go ahead and put all of those recipes in the show notes. And of course, when you get the transcript, that's usually about a week after the podcast has been released, um, all of those recipes will be in there. So there you have it, the six most common holiday stressors, an affirmation for each one, and a blend to help you cope. Really do this work. It is worth it for your well-being. And again, you're not alone in this world there. You have family and friends and colleagues and people who are around you and will pick up your energy. And uh, be mindful, too, of who you're around at the holiday time. If you're around someone who stresses you, be gentle and kind and loving with yourself all year, but especially in the holiday season. Okay, now it's time for that segment we know as Smell My Life. If you're new to the Aromatic Wisdom Podcast, Smell My Life is a quick little segment I share every week on some real-world application of essential oils or hydrosols in my life. So this week I have two. I have been using Melissa in a diffuser for stress. Specifically, uh, Melissa helps to reduce my anxiety. Bergamo is another one, um, Citrus Bergamia, and Melissa, Melissa officinalis. The Melissa plant is beautifully lemony. It's a um, characteristic of oils high in aldehydes. They have this nice lemony smell. And it's very soothing to the central nervous system. So when I get overwrought, as I do at the holidays, as many of us do, I will sit quietly in a chair and I'll kind of really close my eyes and drop my shoulders and try to really go inside my body and inhale this Melissa essential oil. For me, it works wonders. It's really one of my go-tos for anxiety. And the second way that I used essential oils this week is with my Christmas tree. We just put up our tree and it is not a real tree. I really prefer a real tree, but this year we just, we got out the old fakey because that's what we had time to do. And it just looks beautiful, but it doesn't smell the way Christmas tree is supposed to smell. So I took essential oil of Siberian fir, one of my very favorites, and I sprinkled it on the tree. And, you know, you want to watch that you're not sprinkling it on the light bulbs and things because of fire hazard. But you only have to sprinkle a little or you can even just sort of get a, a damp cloth, douse it with scotch pine, Siberian fir, Douglas fir. You might want to use one of the less expensive conifers for this. But anything that smells like Christmas to you will work. 
and wipe the limbs of the tree with it. And it'll, it'll emit this beautiful Christmas tree kind of smell. And of course, it's all natural. You don't have to use any stinking fake stuff to get that Christmassy smell. So that's Smell My Life this week. And finally, a quick little Ask Liz. This is a segment where you write to me with questions about essential oils, business, anything that you would like to know about aromatherapy. And I got this actually while I was recording an email came in, so I'm going to answer it right now. Someone asked if the new My Book of Blends has recipes in it, and I'm not sure that I was clear about that. It is a journal book. It's I will put pictures in the show notes so you can see, but it does not contain any of my recipes. They will be your recipes. So it is a book where you put in your stuff. There's none of my recipes in there. In fact, it's a place where you can record the recipes that you learn from this podcast. So I hope that um, answers that question. Um, if you'd like to write to me, Liz at aromaticwisdom.com. Put Ask Liz in the subject line and I will do my best to get to it and read it on the air. That's it for episode 18 of the Aromatic Wisdom Podcast. Don't forget to go in and check out the blog if you want to go to the website, if you want to sign up for the newsletter, aromaticwisdominstitute.com forward slash newsletter. And have a beautiful week. Until next time, be happy, be well. Thank you.